So it's a beautiful day, and we're here in Marietta, Oklahoma at the Payne Ranch, um, home of James Payne. And this place, I wish you guys could see it. It's, it's just absolutely phenomenal. The facilities are top notch. And uh, we got here earlier, and James had been riding horses since about 5 o'clock. And um, so very grateful for the opportunity to sit down with him. He's a uh, $3.5 million money earner in the NCHA. And, and has done quite a bit for the industry and cutting horses and um he just we take a deep dive on on how and why he got to where he's at you know and and um it hasn't just been uh sunshine and rainbows you know as with most success stories there's ups and downs and the roller coaster that that it takes to get there and and um the the one thing he stresses and, and talks a lot about is the daily grind you know um, today he said he started at five in the summer times they start at two o'clock in the morning um, just to just to beat the heat, you know, and so that definitely comes through and, and he talks about I don't I don't know that he said it specifically um, But just half the battle is just showing up, you know, and um, it, it was just a lot of good conversations a lot of good conversations around work ethic and, and the, the daily grind and, and just what it takes to be successful in the NCHA today So Mike Roberts, the Converse Cowboy, sitting today, sitting down today with James Payne, um, earner of over three million dollars. Yes, three. I think three point three, three five, three, three, yeah, three, five now. Yeah, or almost three five, I guess. Okay, and if I get any of these facts yeah, wrong, please yeah. fact check me on everything. But very, uh, very grateful, very humble to to be able to sit down with somebody um, who has done so well in 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 the cutting and um to to have a chance to sit down and pick your brain um just know i'm very grateful for that and and thanks for taking taking the time to sit down you know i know you've been up since probably before five but you started riding at five this morning and and have a, a long day ahead of you so um we appreciate it my pleasure yes sir um so i'd like to i'd like to just start at the beginning james and and go back to Really, let's go back to that uh, uh, the the clinic where you met Dick at, and and um, or you know we can go back even further than that. Just what got you interested in in the horse industry? Well, I, my, my dad was a saddle maker, and um, and and we lived in Hereford, Texas. Um, his um, dad uh, worked for a guy that um, had a ranch in eastern New Mexico, so pretty much horses were always part of our life. Um, and so I grew up having to wash saddles and do saddle work and stuff like that. And so I had two options to get out of that. And one was do my homework. And then the other was, is like ride horses and stuff. And so, um, pretty much I did my homework and then I, um, had a lot of 30 to 60 day colts. And there was a guy in, um, Canyon, Texas, um, named Clark Weaver that, um, would come, um, and ride with Dick fairly regular. He was a uh, he had worked. I think at that time he worked for AQHA, um, and so I would ride quite a bit with him. And that's kind of how I met Dick. Is is he had told me that um, Dick was needing somebody to um, um, come start colts and ride um, ride some colts. And I met him at that clinic, and um, uh, Dick put on a clinic in Amarillo, mm -hmm. Texas. And that's kind of where I um, um, met Dick at. And so I originally was kind of interested in the reining. And um, uh, so I kind of come to ride reining horses or to learn how to ride, you know, to, to, to further my skills doing that. Mm -hmm. And that was about the time that play gun, uh, I come when I was 17. And so it had been uh, January of 96. So I finished my last semester of high school um and then worked in the afternoons and on the weekends for dick and um, um that was the time when playground would have been uh four and so our uh and dick was kind of phasing out of the raining and kind of gonna, uh, getting more into the breeding and stuff like that and i just kind of made the swap so i uh as i think kind of 97 98 then Plagan the first baby started hitting the ground and and so I just kind of made the transition with it and yeah i don't know I, I feel like the cutting kind of come just a little bit easier than the the raining did anyway and yeah it was a little more entertaining and a little more interesting and 
and just kind of made sense to me a little more. Yeah. How, so you're what, 16, 17 at that time? Oh, yeah, yes, sir. I was 17. And, um, um, and so I finished my last semester of high school in Gainesville, Texas. And then I am, uh, went to two years at, um, I did a little junior college in Gainesville, and then I uh, got a business administration degree in um, uh, southeastern in Durant, Oklahoma. Very nice. And so I kind of did that and pretty much basically worked full-time for Dick, but still went to school. So, I mean, it, I put full-time hours in, but, yeah. I mean, you know, but he was pretty generous in letting me kind of, you know, work school in. And and I can already tell from what little bit of, you know, just from talking to you, you're a very humble guy. Dick told us you had a 4.0 in high school and then in, in college. Is that right? Yeah. And I think that probably stemmed from the deal of trying to get out of the saddle shop pretty much. But yeah, that's kind of where the grades come from was, I got was that. And then, and then, yeah. And, and I just, I kind of did the college deal. Everybody said, Oh yeah, well you have a degree to fall back on. But I, I, I like it was a little bit of a, uh, just a, um, I, I went to college to get the degree more to prove a point to, to a family <laughs> member that said that if I was going to go train horses that I, you know, I, I, I probably wasn't going to get a college degree. So I did that more out of, <laughs> out of spite. Prove, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How did you convince, convince your parents to let you move? Cause that's a bold move, yeah. you know, as a teenager to, to make that leap. I think like, how about this is pretty hard on like me or the first six months is, I think hard on all all of us, but the I don't know. I think they were, I think they were comfortable with Dick and Brenda, and I think they were, you know, like they knew kind of the passion that I had for the horses, and kind of yeah. knew. I mean, I think that I think that just kind of made everybody kind of uh, comfortable. Yeah. So you knew from a very early age what your direction was. Yes, I I, I think I mean horses were always pretty important to my family i mean mm -hmm. not really necessarily cutting not really i mean i did a lot of 4-h shows um nothing at a very high level but just uh horsemanship starting colts you know probably did more of that than showing you know a lot, a lot of these a lot of the youth today in the cutting i mean it's primarily showing a little, most of my stuff was you know like figuring out how to train whatever horse i had to do whatever i wanted to do is yeah more of that than the showing part when did you start your first colt oh heck, how old I don't, were you i don't know i mean i'd had been 13 14 i, I you know kind of i'm not i don't even know if i remember which which what it was yeah any idea how many you started at this point oh heck you know <laughs> thousands I don't, yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know i've lost yeah I've lost count. I don't know. Um, there was a quote. I, f I forget where I saw it. Um, I think somebody was asking asking you a question. Um, but your quote says, "Be there every day and grind, with a lot of repetition." Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, like to me, my um, um, uh, and this is stuff that like Dick said at the time, and I didn't really like it. It just kind of goes in one ear at the other. But then once you kind of uh, get into it and you kind of get into your career you kind of like you kind of remember that stuff that he, he said but like the I think the biggest key in this whole deal is the grind I mean I think it, there's so much ups and downs I think like as a young kid you see you know like so whenever I went to work for Dick Todd, Todd Bergen just won the futurity or he won the futurity pretty recent and he was like 26 and you're like so I'm 17 and i'm thinking oh wow i really like that's really cool that's what i want and stuff like that and you and and before you do good at a show or at a high level show you're kind of thinking well if i can just do good here then that just opens the doors and then it just then i step up to that next deal and and like once you do good at a show it's kind of like especially in the cutting two weeks later they don't remember. I mean, like at the end of the year, you're not going to remember who made the fraternity finals from the year before. You're going to remember who won it, but you might not even remember who's second. Yeah. You know, and, and, and by the time I get to the end of this year, you're not going to remember who did good in January, who did good in February. They're going to be worried about the here and now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and to me, it's, uh, 
success and the show pin is so, um, I don't know, it's quick to f fade away. I mean, like, so I, I think like it's so much of a grind. It's, it's so much of a, um, like I just got done with a show that I feel like I should have done way better at. And I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated with and stuff like that. And I got another show to go to next week. And part of me wants to say, well, I don't want to do it, but basically you kind of got to go grind because you're not going to get out of that deal without the, you know, you're not going to get out of that, um, slump or that, that hole without kind of keep going and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and a little bit too, and this was preached to me like from Dick, peeper too is the fact that that like um a work attitude like a work ethic on the horse like that to develop the work ethic on the horse it's got to be a everyday repetitive kind of type deal you know i think there's a lot of like even for example you know i don't think i think as age goes on i mean just look at the futurity this year gary bellenfont won the futurity and and he's in his his 60s and I don't think that age takes, per se, timing. It, it affects timing eventually, but I don't think it affects it drastically. I think it's, I think it's the fact that to stay competitive because you got so many twenty-year-old kids and thirty-year-old kids that are talented that like or live, breathe, eat, sleep it. I think it's the grind, and I think the older you get, the less you want to. Like, yeah, you still have the experience, you still have the timing, you still can when the futurity like Gary did, but like the day in day out. Okay. Now I'm going to go to a horse show three weeks from now. You know, I've got to work 40 head of horses and get them ready. Mm -hmm. And then I got to like go to the horse show. I work, you know, all week. I got up at five, the show got over at nine and I worked on a Sunday. Well, then I got to go home on Monday and ride three year olds. I mean, it, it ends up being to where it's kind of like, it, you know, and I, that's the level you got to play at if you want to stay on the edge and be competitive. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, I think we set goals. I played, um, I played college baseball, and we talked about you talked about slumps, and and they say have a short memory. You know, yeah. for those yep. times, it's necessary to have a short memory. Put that out of your head, and move yep. on to the next one. But the other point to that I'd like to make is. You know, we also set these goals in life and whether it's training horses or business or whatever it is. And then we, we hit those goals. We actually hit them. And then we're sitting around looking around like, well, well now what? Yeah. And so the, what I realized is there is no destination. Like there is no, you're not going to win the futurity and, and just hang your hat up and say, well, I did it. No, it's, it's the journey and, and, and those steps every single day. That is the destination. Yeah. We're doing it every single day, you yeah. know? Um, can you talk about some of the routines, um, maybe early on, some of the stuff that you did, and then maybe the progression to now, how that's changed? You know, you said you're waking up early. Is that every day? You're getting up and, and riding horses at five? I'd be willing to bet yes. But um, can you just kind of walk me through your day? So, like, um, um, here at the ranch, and then maybe we'll talk about the show, because I know it's two separate things. So, like... Um, um, Usually in the summer, I mean, uh, we back it off up, back it to two in the morning, you know, just to kind of beat the heat. Um, and, you know, in the winter, it kind of varies. Like most of the time, if I'm not going to a horse show, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be probably about six when we're, we're starting on a winter, on a winter day. Um, pretty much like to me, uh, three year olds are really important to me. Um, uh, and even the show horses, like whether I'm going to do it or somebody that works for me is going to do it. Like the show horses have need to kind of be getting out, uh, you know, four or five days a week. You know, some people can get by that are, uh, they can get by with hitting, you know, extra putting them on a walker or exercising, turning them out or whatever and stuff like that for the, mo like a show horse. And then right before a show, then kind of work on them and get them ready. For me, it's it's all muscle memory. It's all kind of like there again that work ethic. Mm -hmm. So our show horses, we're going to get work four to five days a week, whether it's a flag or whether it's a cow, or whatever. Um, three year olds are going to get work five to six days a week um, because you're trying to put them together, um, you know. And then then the two year olds are just trying to get them, you know, that that work like attitude together. So it's pretty much a grind. Like our normal day, we'll we'll start at like if we start at six. 
we really don't break for lunch and we just keep going. Um, I usually have two people loping for me and one person saddling. And then I got a couple other guys that are starting colts and riding colts and they're kind of, they got a string of horses themselves, but we don't break for lunch and we can't, and if we start at six, we're going to get done about five or so, five, six, Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and, and so put about a 12 hour day in kind of type deal. And that's just kind of the, the grind of it. I mean, like, I think the volume, you know, like I, I would rather in a perfect world, I'd do quality. Um, I mean, I do quality, but in a perfect world, I'd ride less horses. But the reality of the situation is, is cutting has gotten so competitive, especially at the national level that, 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 for example, if I start 30 head of Colts and I have 30 head of three-year-olds, probably in reality, if I'm lucky, only two of them are going to be open caliber. Now I'm going to have a hard, like, I'm going to have a nice set of three-year-olds, but only two of them are going to be at the caliber that I can go compete in, you know, at a Fort, you know, major Fort Worth event or any of the tougher events yeah. and stuff. So, so, I mean, um, I, I think if you, if you want to systematically have consistent success in the cutting, everything is a percentage game. It's, it's about like grabbing up, a, scooping up a handful of mud and throw it on the wall. Only so much of it's going to stick, but mm -hmm. something's going to stick if you have enough mud throwing up on the wall. Like, right. so, you know, if I go to a horse show, I want, you know, realistically, if, if I go to a show, a major event that's highly competitive where a lot of tough guys are there, if I can get 25 to a third back to the finals and then get premium money, then I've got to like, say that's a good show if not i'm gonna put too much pressure on myself so the same thing with same thing if you're a breeder if you're a breeder you know if you get 25 percent of your colts that are at a certain level your success if you're mm -hmm. if i'm riding three or if i'm having if i have 25 to 30 head of three-year-olds and i get two of them that are good well that's a success you know, yeah. it, it's, it's just all a percentage. If I'm coaching a non-pro and amateur and they have a real job and they do this for fun and they come in and they have one horse and they may go to three shows and make one finals, it's the process. So you got to say, oh, well, that's, you did good. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a, if you get bogged down in the instantaneous success of it, then you, you know, you get really frustrated and really yeah. unhappy it's more about focusing on the process yeah being in the present moment versus yeah. the outcome right and that's the, yeah. and that's the grind deal of it I, I i think you look at you, you asked what my daily routine is and the, the and, and this more on that grind is is it's the only way i mean my dad wasn't a cutting horse trainer when i grew up like this is I think I, I see several of the kids that grew or horse trainers that grew up that are very successful now that grew up with the horse trainers. A dad grew up in the business and stuff like that. And there's some of this stuff that comes, I think, maybe a little bit more natural and a little easier and stuff like that. But that's the only way I've been able to make this work and make it work in my head and make it work in, in being competitive is like that grind that work ethic that okay man this didn't go good all right worry about the process go back okay well i don't want to go to the next show but i kind of got to yeah you know yeah. just to kind of to get this ball rolling right. it's like a i mean horse anything horse is anything cow related it's like a roller coaster i mean you 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 push the ball up the hill and then you like um, once you get up on top of the hill, you push it down the hill and you like ride it as long and far as you can do it before you have to push it up the hill again. You <laughs> yeah. know, that's just the reality of, yeah, that's the way I, I mean, it's the reality of for me. Anyway. Right. Right. How, um, you, you touched on it. So, um, from doing this from an early age, how much of a benefit is it to have instincts, whether it be reading cattle or the feel of a horse or, you know, because I, I started this late in life, so I feel like I'm at a disadvantage because some other folks I compete against, they can just, they can see cattle, they can read, not only read, but they can remember what that cow does. And that's a hard thing for me to do is to watch a set of cows and remember what they're going to do. So do you think that's a benefit having that instinct? 
Yeah, definitely. Like, and so I mean, I, I think helping people, helping non pros and amateurs. Like, I've got non pros and amateurs that it comes more natural, and mm-hmm. I have more other non pro and amateurs that it doesn't come natural. Some of that's innate. Some of that, you know, at that level. Now, if you're going to talk at an open level, you know, and a lot of this stuff that I um, oh, am going to say, like, it's going to, I'm going to reference Dick Peeper because a lot of, you know, like, even though he made kind of his recognition more as a reigning horse trainer and then, the, you know, and then riding and showing and breeding play gun, it, Dick was a very, very highly, uh, he was a very respected horseman, you know, mm-hmm. and, and stuff. And so a lot of my theory, my thought process comes from there again, him preaching something that I um, then maybe went in one ear and out the other, or I thought it did whenever he was saying it, I didn't quite understand it. And then like, once I get out on my own and doing a lot of this stuff on my own, then I go to like, oh, okay, that's Stuck what he back meant. in the yeah. subconscious. Somewhere. But, but it's, it's the, to me, there's there's two different types of people. There are you know two different types of horse trainers. There's there's the 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 really good showman, and then there's the really good trainers, and there's mm-hmm. very few that are both. And and I think that the way I've been wired all along, but there again, I grew up riding a lot of colts. Like training horses has always come the way a horse thinks has always come way more natural than the showing. I've had to work harder on the showing Mm. but there's some horse trainers out there that like i said some of the the, that their their trainers were or their fathers were trainers and stuff and they grew up showing horses and they have a lot more of an innate feel for showmanship because like the showing training's one thing but showing's another where where you've got to make very Um, we've got to make very like you got to make very quick split second mm-hmm. decisions and it's 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 and it makes a big difference and 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 them kids that that the 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 trainers that were kids that were showed they're at an advantage because it's like it's it's it was just kind of stamped onto them as at an early age you mm-hmm. know and yeah. stuff and i think i think i think it makes a big advantage you can tell you can tell who who showed a lot as a youth and who didn't show a lot you know as a yeah. youth you know yeah um go you, you brought dick up again um i'd like to go back to that was there anything that that and you were there for what eight years i worked for him for eight years and then i leased stalls for him for an uh a, a ninth year and then um and then that's whenever polo ranch offered me a job and i worked for them for four and a half what would you say the biggest biggest impact he had on on you and and your career to this point? So, before, uh, pretty much, Dick's horsemanship and thought process about getting a hold of a horse's mind is number one, and then number two is 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 both. And this had a lot to do with Brenda too, but the business side of it too, like mm. you know, running a business, looking at it as a business. So, probably pretty much like the. The horsemanship side of the it doesn't matter if you're riding a reining horse rope horse barrel horse whatever it's 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 about getting hold of the horse's mind and 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 um once you got a hold of the horse's mind then you can pretty well the repetition will make them figure out the fit footwork mm-hmm. yeah talk about that a little bit the the horse because this isn't for you this is not a horse hobby this is a horse business right so the the day in day out stuff um it, has that evolved a, as the years have gone by? How do you continue to, I guess, build that business? Well, I mean, so, so, and this is kind of preached from the business side of it too. And this is like kind of a Brenda and Dick, you know, Dick kind of type deal too. But the, I mean, training horses basically covers overhead. I mean, like you don't really make money training horses. If you're going to make money in the horse deal, you you're gonna have to sell horses you're gonna have to show you're gonna have to win so it's like selling um commissions personal horses you sell or what you win Mm. and stuff and so but there again it's the business it's the training it's the training part of it that covers the overhead that allows that to happen as far as the selling end of it or the showing end of it and stuff like that so you need the over you need the training part of it to cover the overhead, but you're really not going to 
live a very comfortable life unless you can show or win or sell or whatever. So what my business model is, is, is you there again, it, it, in this, this is a, not a perfect world, but like a little bit of volume cover the overhead, but it gives you enough access to horses, enough horses to where maybe you can get a good show horse, you know, like a good set of show horses, or you can get, um, a group of horses trained where, you know, like, like I said, it, right now, I'm in the last two months, I've had cert, uh, probably a dozen people ask if I had any four-year-olds or five, six-year-olds for sale. So if I had a group of them, whatever, then you, you know, that you commissions and everything like that. The other end of it too is, 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 um, I look at it is, um, my wife, um, shows, I, I, I think shows really, really well. And, and so what, you know, we'll show a horse, put some record on it, get it solid, get it kind of proven in the show deal, and then we'll sell it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's part of our, our kind of business model. That's kind of, that's how we make our yearly salary per se. Now, it's you. not really on the grind of working 12 hours a day. It's more of, of, of picking the right horse for her, let her go show it, let her get some record sell it to somebody that, that, you know, that's doing this for fun and amateur non-pro and go show and stuff like that and, 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 and move on. So, mm -hmm. you know, her winnings, my winnings, what we sell for a customer, what we, you know, what we sell that belongs to us. That's, that's what determines whether or not we have a good year. Yeah. I guess. And that's pretty much our business model. Yeah. And I, and you, you said you made a good point earlier um, when we walked up, you said anytime you win something or you may have some money come in, it goes back into the business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's the other thing too, like long term, I, you know, I, I think this I 35 corridor is just going to go up. I mean, if you, I mean, just driving to Fort Worth, you know, like things have built and that's moving North. Mm -hmm. Um, it's obviously maybe a little bit more popular to be in Texas than Oklahoma, but I still think being this close to I 35 land's going to go up. And so that's kind of the type of deal that's long term you know f funnel any profits or whatever into some form of real estate it's kind of like in this area and then that's that's so if you're asking business plan business model that's kind of long term yeah well you've done a done a very good job building this place this oh, is this is one of the nicest you. places i've ever visited so yeah thank you um you mentioned the roller coaster and um i'd like to talk about failure or perceived failure because i don't believe there are failures in life i think there's just stuff we learn from so is there one in, in your career so far um that you can lean on and um, maybe it was a tough time at that time but looking back it had to happen for a reason well to me the most recent one is is so like i feel like i had one of the better years that i've had last year um that i've had and the first three months were a disaster i thought like i mean i i had i thought two really nice four-year-old mares um that i thought were really really good and i couldn't get them showed um uh the first three months of the year and then about the super stakes which had been about in april um things started clicking and then it just built from there and and basically the thing the mantra and just like this last show that i just went to that i don't you know i don't feel like i and performing quite where I need to perform. I mean, the mantra that I just keep telling myself is the years long, you know what I mean? Like it's, I've got little, I've got little earning goals that I want to win, you know, earn every year and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, it, you stay on a uh, checklist of, okay, am I meeting it or whatever? And sometimes that checklist puts more pressure on it. Like mm -hmm. my nature is the type to put a little, you know, too much pressure on myself. So anyway, I can relieve that pressure just like, if I go to a horse show and I show six out of horses at a major event, I want to make the finals on all six, but I've got to tell myself so I don't put too much pressure and don't get anything back. I got to tell myself is look out of them six. If I get two back, I got to be happy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's the way I, I got to look at it. And the, the other thing is, 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 you know, like, so is that what, what I think turned the corner last year, was a simple fact of is like look i'm not on target to meet reach my goal i'm just gonna just back off and i just like it is what it is if i have an off year i have an off year who cares 
And once I did that, then things kind of started opening up. It got better. And, you know, I, you know, I, well, you know, I won well over my kind of my little target goal and, and stuff like that. So that's cool. But yeah. And, and it seems to be, there's so many moving parts. You can have that horse just perfect and then have every cow that you think that you want to cut, you get them cut and then just something goes wrong. Uh, It seems like that that can easily happen. Yeah. Well, that's like, like the last show, the last show that I went to, I mean, I really think out of eight head of horses, I really think that, that everything, but with the exception of maybe a couple, um, where it's trying to be good. Um, I think that, uh, I think that a lot of that had to do with cows draw. Um, and like I said, it's so much of a split second decision that it got feeling it just, it is, it is what it is. That's kind of, you just got to walk out and say, well, that's, it's that's just cutting you yeah know? just yeah. The, when you do the cow element when you throw the cow element into it i mean obviously the horse deal but most horse sports you know you have the horse element and you have the rider element but that cow deal just throws a whole another dynamic to the situation where it, it 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 takes away a lot of predictability right right i uh i've got a couple more questions around okay. mindset and then i want to get into some horse stuff um is there ever a time where you're just unclear or maybe unfocused? And, uh, and if so, how do you get out of that? Like for me, I, I like to meditate. I like to journal, write stuff down, uh, go for a walk, clear my head out. Um, it, what is it for you that, that you like to do? Well, to me, pretty much like I'll go to getting out of a – there again, I, I think there's two types of focuses. There's a, there's a training focus and then there's a, a, um, a showing focus. And – and and to me like the training focus has always been easier than the showing focus and so i it's it's strategic a little bit like i've got to go to you know i've got to be going to a show about every three weeks i mean like i i'm jealous of the people that can you know wait six months or you know not go to any of these smaller aged events and then just show up at fort worth and win you know (laughs) Like I can't do that. I've got to, um, um, I've got to, um, even if I'm going to go to a show, I don't really like, I'm going to go to a show that I don't like if it fits in that time frame. So, mm. so about like, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking to go to a major event every three weeks. So I'm going to be at home for three weeks to get everything riding at home and then, uh, and, and stuff. And if I can do that, I can keep my, I can keep my sharpness and I can keep the mental, um, uh, everything the mental thought process right as far as the showing goes now if i if i skip a show and i like lay off for six weeks then to me the first show is going to be a, not a disaster but it's not going to be real good yeah and then and then the and then if i can do a second show right after that so to me it's like the only way i'm going to do it is and there again it goes back to the grind it like it just keep going and keep yeah. grinding and not really have the break now yeah. i don't there again i can also see myself in another 15 years saying to heck with the grind i'm just like <laughs> like i've done what i want to do and i'm just you know and i may not you know but then then i think once you get to that spot i think your competitiveness even if your timing is good and you're and stuff like that i think your competitiveness drops mm-hmm. but yeah um, when did you, I'm curious to know, you know, for those folks, um, that may be climbing up and, and they're, they're right on the edge of hitting, getting to that open level. When did you realize your talent level was good enough to do this professionally? And, uh, well, I'll stop there and I got a follow up question to that. Well, like, um, the, the, probably like the first really, really nice horse that gave me a lot of confidence was um a little bay mare that the um, barber cowan owned um and it was a, a a little mare that like you lope around and she can't even stand the correct lead but she's really really cow and can stop really really hard and she just kind of like filled in the pieces and took care of me and 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 i wished i had her to do over again because i made some mistakes on her but like that was the first horse that really gave me like kind of made me feel you know kind of bulletproof and invincible like i could i could do it how was she um, bred she was a, a little lena's legend 
and I can't remember what mare she was out of, but it was it was basically a smart Lolina stud, the kind of a cow horse stud up mm-hmm. from the northwest, like not really popular bred. I got gotcha. you. Um, anyway, and so then it ends up being, and I think this is this is probably the biggest like at that point I you know I like I made a couple really tough finals and stuff like that, but really the name of the game it's it's horsepower and it's horse flesh it's 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 having the right owners it's having like i know some people that have the right owners that 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 don't have the right eye for a horse it's 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 the whole deal it's knowing what wins Mm -hmm. it's having the owner that can buy the horse that can win it's having the ability to find them horses um because you know that would have probably been in 2004 2005 um but really, I didn't feel like I hit another gear until probably about 2012, 13 kind of type deal. And that's kind of whenever Once in a Blue Boon popped along, Serena Duel, um, a couple of them mares, you know, I yeah, uh, that, that kind of opened Pooh Smoothie. They kind of opened the door, you know, like the that Once in a Blue Boon is the horse that pretty much taught me how to win. You know, like taught me kind of like, I mean, I still not, I still can't turn it on and off as well as I'd like to on the winning part, but I mean, he's the one that kind of like showed me kind of how to do and what, you know, and stuff like that. Um, how to do things to, to step it up just because he's the first horse and kind of really probably the only horse that I've ever had. That, I mean, with the exception of maybe PG heavily armed, like those two, those two studs, PG heavily armed and once blue boon are kind of the, one of the, they're the only horses that I've ever rode that's had gears. And when I'm saying gears is you could set and coast and mark a score. You could like step up and, and stand on them. And, you know, you could be sitting on a 16, the first go and not really feel worried. Cause you could, you could step on it and, and push. So I, I, I really think in my deal, um, in my deal, it's been horsepower, horse flesh. So I, I think it's been the horses that stumbled upon my, path that's is what made me feel like well i can do this yeah when you talk about them teaching you um why is that because of they show you what what a horse can do or maybe another possibility or their capabilities that well like like, for example like the 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 once in baboon you know like pg heavily armed had his his deals he was really really physical once in Blue Boone was so intelligent and he was so smart on a cow. Like he was a very intelligent horse. He's like kind of the one and few horses that could like play with a cow. Like he could, he could be, cow could be going to the right and, and I could kick and he could be midair and then change directions and come back the other way. And it's just, it's just stuff that he would do stuff that other horses couldn't or mm-hmm. other horses I've had that couldn't. And, and the fact that he had gears and I kind of learned to, to, to play with them gears. I, I felt like even the horses that were nice that maybe weren't that level, I could still get it. Like he taught me how to, to um, he taught me how to, to get more out of, I feel like the, um, some of the other horses that maybe weren't quite as good. Yeah, I was gonna ask, does that raise your expectations after riding a horse like that? Does that raise your expectations? A little bit, I mean, a little, well, like like that first little mare, I told you that little bay mare and stuff like that, I I, she, I made some tough finals on her and, 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 then, and then I went to second guessing myself about like, well, was that just because the mare was good or could I do this again? Yeah. By the time I got to that, that that blue stud I, once in blue boon i had um you know like i'd made a few more open finals i'd made like the futurity finals i'd done some other things i was a little more confident in where i was at but like um i don't know i, I just like i feel like there was a little bit right after him there was a little bit of like maybe my expectations were a little bit high. I was demanding a little bit much, but I feel like I was at a different spot in my career mm-hmm. where it wasn't. Yeah, no, I, like if he had been a little earlier, yeah, maybe I would have went thinking, well, I got to make everything do this. But yeah. no, like at that spot, I, I felt like he helped me elevate everything else. But once I, I was realistic enough to know kind of, okay, well, I'm on this kind of caliber of horse and, and 
you know, I got to, you know, I, 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 there's a line I can't cross or I'm expecting too much. And I know at the Have futurity you, sale this past year, the, the once in a blue boon sold very well. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, what is, what do you foresee in the, the future from him? I like him. Like I, I've got several this year, several three-year-olds this year that I really like. Um, um, to me, they're, they're really cowy. Um, sometimes they can maybe move a little unorthodox, um, but they're all real stoppy. They, uh, um, big, strong horses intentions are really good towards a cow um some of them are, are good face some of them are a little bit tough face but that kind of comes maybe a little with the breeding mm. but even the tough faced ones when you get tired or when you get tired of pulling on them you throw your hand down they're going to cut and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i think that's what i think that's what the people are the public is kind of seeing now and stuff and and i think that's um i think that's what they appreciate a, about him but i mean i i'm a fan but i mean there again i like i i um i understand how they think right you know? right talk about um i want to talk about mindset like in the show pen but maybe before you go in is there a routine you know i said i played baseball so baseball players are very superstitious we've got our, our little routine we do on, in the on deck circle if if we go four for four with two doubles and whatever I'm not washing my socks. Yeah. You know, do yeah. you, do you have any any superstitions or pregame rituals that you do before you ride into a set? I have I have certain shirts that I want to wear. Like um like I, I don't I don't I'm not I'm not the sponsor deal has not really ever been a big deal, so I don't like a lot of writing on my shirts. I mm -hmm. like something kind of blues, I like light colors. Um so I, I have certain shirts that I have that I'm gonna wear on certain days. Um I like I, I think to uh, a lot of times you know i mean i've got a lot of horses to work but like on a uh, for example with the super stakes coming up when the super stakes is i'm gonna like to get in there the bunch before kind of watch i don't want to watch too many runs because i don't you know like that kind of make you nervous but i like to watch watch the cows the, the thought process the the approach how the to cut your cows and everything like that and like i said i don't really want to watch too many runs because then you kind of you see people doing good and that puts pressure on you you see people doing bad it gets you psyched out a little bit I just, mm -hmm. but i just want to see kind of there's different strategies i mean different pins the wide wider pins um you know you, you cut cows differently than in real narrow pins um sometimes cows are a little bit tougher and you need to cut you know a little slower cow sometimes cows are really numb and you got to cut a little faster cow it yeah. just just get a feel for the the situation and and like a big part of my deal i mean and it's not really rituals per se but it's just kind of it's everything it's just trying to get your mind in the right spot like so um i tried to get it get it to where number one i'm you know i've got to get my mind to the spot where i'm not trying to have the pressure of I got to do good. I got to do good. And, uh, you know, I got to basically say, well, all right, if I lose a cow, well, what the hell? I, I, I got another horse. And that's about the only way you can compete at this level, whether it's really unforgiving and no mistakes and stuff. So, so I got to get my mind where I get the pressure off. But at the same time, once I get the pressure off where I feel very, very comfortable to be aggressive because, you know, everybody, every trainer, you know, and this is probably the one thing I learned the most when I worked for the Polar Ranch is, is, is every trainer has, and, and this takes a while to develop because the judges have to see you over and over again, but you do what you can sell. And what I can sell is, is I'm going to work a cow for a long time. I'm going to go stop a cow. I'm going to be really aggressive. It's made me not be real pretty and, and cute and everything like that, but it's going to be a lot of grit, a lot of heart, a lot of just kind of like go, go hold a cow. And my mindset has to be really aggressive if I'm going to like show that off. I can't just go in there and try to ease the cow out and then work it for, you know, 15 seconds. I'm going to have to work it for 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. I'm going to have to kick. I'm going to have to kick it to the outside and be really aggressive and stuff like that. So, and to get there, you, you got to, in order to be aggressive, the main reason why a person's not aggressive is because they don't want to screw up. And so the only way you're going to do that is if you, get you know get your mind right to where it's like you're not scared to mess up because in today's world 
if you mark a 16, you might as well mark a 180 as opposed to 16 because it's going to pay the same. Mm. So, do you think a lot of that stems from the daily grind, the time you put in? That just builds that confidence when you do get to the arena to show you can just let go and let muscle memory take over and a little bit be of aggressive. that, a little bit of that, and a lot, a little bit of mental numbness too. I mean, like it's just like I said. You go show it's it's about like throwing a bunch of mud up on the wall like so much of it's going to stick you know like yeah. you know like a lot of it's going to fall off but some of it's going to stick so it's it's kind of like being a little bit wore out being a little bit tired being a little bit kind of like whatever just takes a little bit of the edge off and yeah you kind of get to where it's like man yeah, i don't whatever yeah. <laughs> you know? do you still get jitters though you know like whenever you're sitting on deck about to go in you've been doing this for a long time do you still get the, that, that feeling in your stomach before oh, you ride yeah. in? Oh, yeah, I mean, especially, yes, definitely. Like, um, um, so, like, at these smaller shows, I'll get a lot of jitters on a horse that I have high expectations for that I haven't been, like, so say I went to three shows and I didn't get it showed, but I have high expectations, I'll get nervous. I'll get nervous in a, in a finals where basically you look at the finals payout and the bottom half only gets the entry back, which means I don't make money because I, you know, you take the entry out and split it, split the rest. Mm -hmm. um, so the, you know, if I just get my entry back, I don't make any money. So, you know, you've got to execute, you know, I go in there and, you know, I, the other mantra I say, it's not about the championship. It's about the money. It's about winning the money, not, not winning the championship. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you want to get as big of a premium check as you can without messing up. And then mm -hmm. if it's meant to be, then you win yeah. um, and stuff. And, and so the, I get nervous whenever you're in the finals and you're trying to get that premium money. And yeah. so you're trying to push as, to get as much as you can without over pushing. I mean, I've messed up a lot of runs in the finals trying to do that. Um, I get, you get, I get nervous in a, an event where like a Fort Worth event where you're limited to the number of horses you can show. So you might sit at a show for three weeks and you only show two horses, you know, like, so you get nervous cause you, you don't have, you know, you get more nervous than that than if you do one of these other shows where you can show as many as you want. And right. You may have six head of horses to show. Well, if you do bad on one, well, I still got another one, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah definitely. I got you. What uh, do you have a favorite a, f a favorite song to show to? Like in baseball, we have walkout songs. Do you have a song that, if you could pick, what what song would you show to? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like it'd be probably some it'd be some some old school rock song. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, my 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 song list is is old time uh, um, i like 60s i like classic vinyl so classic rock i like um old country okay. so but it'd probably be like yeah like something something like intense and hard and fast and go cut and yeah just go cut right on i was i forget what show it was i was watching you show uh once in a blue boon it was like they had the blake shelton like whole album they played yeah. old red and, yeah. like, and then just <laughs> yeah. rolled in another blake shelton yeah. song yeah but um i was just curious yeah. i didn't know yeah the and i noticed you have music out here playing y'all you y'all typically have the radio going when you're training yeah to me like there again there it kind of helps the day go by but it's yeah. like um i don't i don't know i don't like it when it's quiet i'd rather it just be kind of like music and mindless entertainment kind of type deal just, yeah, just background just, noise yeah background noise if you could so you've been doing this for a long time if you could go back in in time, hypothetically speaking, go back in time and give your twenty year old self advice about life, about training, what advice would that be? I uh, be I don't know, just be patient. I mean, I how about this? The only thing I wished I could have done as a kid is I wish I could have showed more as a kid, like kind of more at a little bit of a national level. I think success would have come a little bit quicker. If I'd have showed more as a kid, kind of bad and had access to doing that as a 20 year old kid, like 20 year old self version of me. Like, I mean, I was wanting to do really good. I wanted things to happen quicker than what it was. Um, you know, I don't know if it was intentional or if it's just the way it was. I mean, there was times I got impatient, um, but with yourself or with horses, 
no, or with both. myself with yeah. where I was at, where I was going and everything like that. And I, I mean, the biggest thing I was just take a deep breath and things kind of come like they, they, they come when it's supposed to come. Mm hmm. You know, like I think I wanted it more, I wanted it quicker. Like, yeah, I'm not really impatient with horses. It was more just like, you know, I wanted a place. I wanted um, success. I wanted this, you know, and stuff like that. And, and, and like even building this place right here, the, the first, um, heck the first four years, I mean, like it was Western. I mean, we, uh, had a bicycle for a flag. I had a hot fence for to where I kept my cows. Um, Sunday on Sundays, they would go through the hot fence and you'd have to go try to find them. It was a constant battle to, to just kind of feel like you're spinning your wheels. But, you know, if you do good here and then you, you know, you build a bigger barn or you build a more fence or you clear more brush and then it gets better and it gets easier. And then, you know, and it just feels like it, things speed up once you get the base, you know, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. And I think, you know, the, the reality of it was, is, it took me most of my twenties to, to get the base before things started kind of getting better. Yeah. I think that's just human nature or maybe this microwave society we live in, live yeah. in. We want it to happen right, right now. Yeah. But, um, would you agree that having that, having gone through that and, and doing that and having cows get out of the hot wire fence and running that bicycle flag makes you not want to go back to that place yeah. in a way? Does yeah. that drive you? Yeah. Yeah. No. And, 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 and I think too, it, 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 um, I think that that's all experience. Like there again, success, failure, um, hard times, easy times, you know, you know, when I was building this place, um, I mean, there'd be times where, I mean, uh, I was holding my breath for three or four months just for the finances end of it and stuff like that. Just because you're building a project, it's caught, you know, usually when you're building something that costs more than what you think it's going to. And, then it strains you more and stuff like that. And, and it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it matures you like, you know, just take, you know, it's, it's all right. It'll, Everything's it, going to be yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious to know changing gears on you here. So you, you, you come from a reigning background or that was a, your initial interest mm -hmm. done very well in the cutting. Have you ever given cow horse a thought? Well, I attempted it, but I, I didn't do a very thorough job attempting it once. Uh, a few years ago, I had a horse. I thought it moved good, but there again, my cutting schedule and then the number of three-year-olds, like if I were to do it again, I wouldn't mind trying it again, but I, I, it's, I can't do it at the moment because if I was going to do it and I was going to do it right, I would, I would do it where I could go ride with, um, you know, have the time to go ride with some people. I'd go buy a kind of maybe a weekend, like a, a weekend bridle horse and practice and kind of just do that. The other deal that I learned, like, so I, I admire those people. I mean, like, and, and I admire more even now after I did it, tried it and did it and stuff like that because their timing and their, everything's good. And, and like, it, it's, there, it's a lot of really good hands there. Um, the, the thing that would make it very hard for me to try to do is is because what i learned the time i did it is the horses that they're doing it on it's the horses that i want to take to the futurity so i mean you know what i mean like so i'd have to burn you could you know yeah. so if i'm gonna ride 30 head of three-year-olds and i got two of them that might be good open futurity horses you know that you'd have to burn one of them to go there you know what yeah. i mean and it's yeah. just but but yeah like i i'm very very highly respectful like uh, in awe of that sport i respect the people that do that sport um there's a lot of really really good hands that do that um very very good horsemen mm -hmm. um i don't see myself doing it anytime soon just because of that 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 aspect of it like i think to do it to be good and stuff like that yeah, I think it, I think it's no different than the cutting. You got to like live, breathe, eat, sleep, grind, do it to get better about it. Do you think it takes a, spe a certain horse to be able to do that? Meaning, would you be able to take a cutter over to the reigning cow horse? I think there's some of them, but there again, I think it's your same, it, it, it's going to be the same nowadays. I mean, there again, this, the, the whole since things gotten specialized, the whole deal's gotten tougher 
and more competitive. I mean, you know, um, like even in the cutting, the people that it, it's not about if the horse stops and turns around now, it's about how pretty, how hard, how fast, how, you know, cool they do it. And the cow horse is no different. I mean, mm. like to me, I think there's a lot of cutters that could make cow horses, but it's kind of like, um, you don't, um, I, you like the same to play at that upper level of cow horse it's you're going to be taking the same kind of caliber that's going to play at the top of the game in the cutting i right. mean it's mm -hmm. you, you can't just take oh yeah this is the, he's an okay cutter he'll make a cow horse like you can't it's not yeah he's going to be the yeah best of the best yeah yeah i got you so cutting's very interesting because i think it is the only sport to where you can be competing with somebody and be on the same team at the same time yeah talk about that a little bit how maybe you go you show and then you get on a turn back horse and go turn back for that that guy you're competing against yeah. well i mean to me i think and be on and and honestly do your best you know yeah. what i mean really you're not really competing against that person like you're competing against you're 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 you're, you're pretty much competing you're trying to like like you're you're it's more of a getting the cows cut cutting the right cows doing the right like it's not really like i find it's more of a competition with yourself and the and the the your surroundings mm -hmm. as opposed it is about like a, a a foot race where you're gonna i'm gonna outrun this guy it's not really that it's 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 that cow element and that horse element throws enough of a wrench in there to where it's like you're basically just trying to execute your own your own run mm -hmm. and it takes care of itself so i mean I, I don't really look at it as competing against your competitors it's it's more about like if i do my job i get this cow cut right i get it get the right cow cut then the score is going to be what it is and right in advance so and i think that's kind of that that's that that mentality of that deal and i think most people most of the cutters would have that mentality yeah that's very cool i just i've never and there may be another sport out there but i haven't seen it so yeah. where you want that guy to do his, his yeah. best and you want to turn back for him right and, and help him you know do the best he can um let's talk let's talk about the cutting um and and what you, your thoughts are you know i went to the futurity this year the stands were scarce you know there's not many people going down there what are your thoughts on that i don't know i mean i think ncha is worried about that kind of type of stuff i mean i think a lot of horse associations are i think that um um i mean i, I think society's changing i think that um cutting is expensive um you know, I, I think that, that back in the 80s, whenever you saw it, in the early 90s when you saw it, I, I think it was cool to play cowboy. I think, um, you know, a lot of the people playing that was heavily invested in the oil, oil business, you know, oil stuff. Um, and like I said, I think it was cool to play cowboy. I think, I think things have changed. I think there are less expensive sports um i think that um you know i think people i think society's moved away for a little bit from an agricultural kind of type type deal so mm -hmm. you know base deal and, and a little bit more into city more urban life deal so i i think that that there's things that the association can do to change but i think too you're fighting a little bit of society too i got you i want to get into some rapid fire We'll okay. just kind of bang some of these out. What is your favorite Western movie? Um, probably Man from Snow River. Man from Snow River. Good, good answer. Yeah. Uh, favorite book? Um, Quarter Horse News. There you go. I mean, that's not a book, but it's <laughs> magazine. <a> magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Um. Do you do you have a favorite horse that you've trained or showed? Once in Blue Boone. Uh, favorite saddle maker? Uh, my dad. 
Is that the saddle you ride now? Uh, yes. Um, well, he had a stroke, and so he quit. And um, I, I, I show in his, and then there's another guy named Ron Carlton. Then I've got a saddle of his that, and stuff. But but yeah, like I, I've got several of his saddles, or several of my dad's saddles. I got you. Um, favorite bit maker? Um, I really don't. I mean, you've got the novel. And there you said two word answers. Um, uh, no, it's Clapper, fine. B- uh, Billy Clapper. Okay. Um, I mean, there again, you got stuff that you use. I mean, like I'm not going to be not a lot of my stuff's not going to be fancy, but like everybody wants Billy Clapper's stuff. I mean, that, that's expensive. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he, he's he's not making as much now and right. stuff, and and so they're, they're very very popular, very hard to come by. So yeah, you know, yeah. Um, favorite show to go to um fort worth anything in fort worth all right last question james and we ask i ask everybody this question that comes on the show what is your what is your definition of a cowboy um and i gotta do it in two words or I can, no this, I can this one you can okay, elaborate can, yeah sorry right. you can elaborate <laughs> i don't know like i i think it, like so i would say my granddad was a cowboy and like a cowboy just does things like a cowboy does things like whether it's a horse or a cow or it's just anything they do things really efficient um i think that you get a lot of yahoos in there that can rope and they think oh i gotta rope this you gotta do this you gotta you gotta go to you gotta wear shaps all the time you gotta wear a hat all a cowboy hat all the time i mean everybody's like well that's not western attire like like to me, I, I saw my granddad. Um, oh, there was a calf that needed to be, oh, that that was separated or whatever. And I saw him just walk by and just like Juliana loop on it on it and just walk right off and never even stirred it up and stuff like that. And to me, that's that's the essence of a cowboy. Whether you're dealing with a horse, um, it's moving around a horse really smooth and and. Um, and quiet and not getting anything rattled moving around a cow the same way it's 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 just it's it's a lifestyle it's an attitude it's a just handling livestock in a very quiet um smooth manner efficient manner yeah so more than just wearing a cowboy hat and Mm -hmm. chewing tobacco (laughs) or working working on a ranch you know right right well james that's it um i want to thank you again i enjoyed the i enjoyed the hell out of it and um, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year. Well, and thanks. And um, would love to have you back on at some other time. Yep, perfect. All right. Sounds good.